After owning the G920 for years, I sold it. In this video, I'm going to be going through the issues of the G923, G920, and G29 that really grinded my gears. Now, some of these issues are small and others are quite large. Now, this video is not a do not buy, but rather stating an awareness of issues that this wheel has. Now, for some people, these issues won't be deal breaking, and for others, they possibly will be. And if there is an issue that can be reduced in severity or even fixed, I'll explain it. Let's start off with the brake pedal. It's simply not great to use. I've stated this in some reviews of the G920 I've done and also setup videos, and there's a few reasons for this. It's a combination of stiffness and input to brake the car. So instead of a linear approach like braking in a real car where the more you press, the stiffer it gets, the G920 pedal will get stiff really quickly before even getting to a point where you can really stop the car. And the biggest issue is that this is happening at high and low speeds. The reason for this is because of a rubber bump stop in the board itself. Now, the bump stop in the G923 is actually easier to press. It's a little softer, but it's still not perfect. Now onto the wheel. I felt that the D-pad was quite inconsistent. Right on the D-pad, for example, feels really good. Up and down feels okay, not as good as the right, and the left feels really numb with little feedback. Also, the left and right bumpers do feel quite cheap. The issue with this is if you're using them quite often, I would be concerned of them breaking. They're made of a plastic that feels quite brittle, and the way they're mounted to the wheel itself, I don't feel like it's going to last a lot. Another thing is that these buttons are unoptimized, so they do not link up with most games you are playing. Now, if you're using a G920 with the A, B, X, and Y, then they link up to pretty much every game you play, but these bumper buttons do not. Usually, you have to go into every single game to manually set up these buttons, which is quite a pain. Also, the clamps are something that I'd be concerned about because they have been known to break with heavy use. Now, some remedies for this are just not clamping them too tight to the mounting point that you are at. Now, I didn't have any issues with my board because I used it so lightly, but if you do use it a lot, I would be very critical on how you mount it. The good thing is you can buy replacement clamps, but it's just a little bit of a hassle having to reinstall them. The next thing is actually a deal breaker for me, and that's the exclusion of Logitech G Hub on the Xbox and PlayStation platforms. It's only on Mac and Windows. For reference, Logitech G Hub is a software that you can use for a lot of different Logitech devices, including the G920, G923, and the G29. It means that you can change the sensitivity of the wheel, you can change the pressures of the pedals themselves, which is great, and you can also do button mapping. But if you're on console, you cannot use this software. It includes great quality of life features like being able to change the rotation angle. So if you're playing more of an arcade sim, like Forza for example, and you feel that the 900 degree standard doesn't feel right, then you can actually lower the amount to let's say 700, 600, 540, and even lower if you really want to. This means that if you are playing on console, you will lose out on these features, meaning that you'll only be able to use what the in-game manual settings of each title has to be able to customize it to your liking. Next is the optional shifter. Now the issue with this is it feels quite cheap and plasticky and also even when you've got it mounted to the desk nice and tight you still do miss gears now and then. I know for example I missed fourth and fifth quite a lot and sixth gear was definitely an issue but there are some fixes to make it better that are quite easy to do and also quite cheap. Just one of the accessories is from Gmod UK. Now these guys make a H pattern shifter adapter that slots straight onto the shifter and it means that you can go into gears without missing shifts. It's really good. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you do want to make it much better, I can definitely vouch for them. Now my last and biggest problem is the price. It's up to $400 if you're getting a new G923. Now, I would not go nearer at that price because that's nearing direct drive price. These are only gear driven wheels, which is a class bracket below. This also excludes the shifter, which is another price addition. Now, I personally have bought mine used for 150 USD, which was a good deal at the time. So that was the G920 with the wheel and pedals, plus the optional shifter. Now, if you can find it for that deal and want to risk buying a used variant, which they are always reliable, then I would get it. But if you are finding them for a couple hundred more than that, I wouldn't. Now, if you're wanting a warranty, 
then you can definitely find them for discounts every couple months through different deals like Boxing Day, Black Friday, and specific business deals. So you don't usually have to pay retail if you shop around thoroughly. Now it's not all bad news, you can fix most of these issues. For example, with the break, if you are on PC like me, you can go into Logitech G Hub software and change the sensitivity of the brake pedal. Increase it to 100% and it means that you can stop the car easy for a quick fix. The next thing is actually a recommendation from a viewer on my channel. I'm actually gonna read their comment to explain what they did to fix the brake. So this is from Wet Penguin. They said to fix the brake pedal to reach 100%, you don't need to remove the rubber, which is a following step I'm going to explain. On PC, just type set up USB game controller in the search bar and you can calibrate the brake pedal so 100% is where you want it to be. So you won't need to press that hard. Now what that means is you won't have issues stopping the vehicle anymore but the pedal will still not feel that great to use. If you do want this longer travel of the brake, you can remove the rubber bump stop in the brake pedal itself. Now I didn't do it and I don't have footage of it, but what I can do is link a video that explains it very well and shows all the steps to removing it and making the board feel a ton better. Regarding the shifter, you can also do some temporary fixes and also some more expensive ones if you want to. On the cheaper side, you can put some rubber bands around the shifter and it means that it won't jiggle around too much when you're using it, meaning you won't miss shifts. The other thing is Gmod UK's H-Pattern Shifter. Now, this does cost a little more, but it will be a massive payoff once you install it and feel how good it is. Because of the magnets inside, it means that it will slot into gears, it will have a nice clicking feel, and it feels way better to use. While these are legitimate problems, there is one more that I think you should take into consideration, and that's if you really plan to use it. I made the mistake of thinking that I was going to use it weekly, and that was not the case. It just gathered dust for months of no use, and it became pretty much just another depreciating asset. And the only real reason I used it was to make YouTube content, and that was uncommon. So really, if you do plan to really use it and you are looking for a budget wheel, then I would recommend it. And especially doing the fixes that I've said will make it a ton better. But if you don't think you're really going to use it, then I would just steer clear and save the cash. Now, if you are still considering this wheel, I can recommend this video right here. It's a review of the wheel more in depth than what I've done here. And also, if you have got it, I recommend watching this video, which has a setup of it on Forza Horizon 5. I'll see you in the next video and peace.